You are listening to The Pregnancy Podcast with Vanessa Merton. Hello, thank you for tuning into The Pregnancy Podcast. In today's episode, we are answering the question, why do birthmarks happen? Birthmarks are one of those little mysteries that many babies are born with. Some are tiny and faint, while others are more noticeable and can change over time. In today's episode, we will explore why birthmarks happen, the different types that you might see, and what they can tell you about how your baby's skin develops. From pigmented spots to vascular marks like hemangiomas and port wine stains, you'll learn what causes them, why some fade and others don't, and when it's worth mentioning them to your pediatrician. You can see the full article and all of the resources for this episode at PregnancyPodcast.com slash birthmark. If you are looking for more evidence-based content, become a Pregnancy Podcast Premium member. Not only will you get an ad-free experience, so you never have to hear advertisements, including these ones for Pregnancy Podcast Premium, You also get access to the entire catalog of episodes. That includes hundreds of episodes with evidence-based content that you won't find anywhere else. Check out Pregnancy Podcast Premium at PregnancyPodcast.com slash premium. Centella asiatica is an incredible herb that has been shown in clinical studies to effectively prevent stretch marks in up to 89% of women. The best Centella asiatica product that I have found for stretch marks is the True Belly Serum by 8 Sheep Organics. It contains 85% pure Centella asiatica extract and it's specially formulated to effectively prevent and fade pregnancy-related stretch marks. Like all 8-sheet products, the True Belly Serum comes with a 100-day happiness guarantee. You can try it risk-free, and if you feel that the serum has not worked for you or you're not 100% happy with your purchase, simply send them an email and they'll get you a refund, no questions asked. Check out the True Belly Serum and get 10% off when you go to PregnancyPodcast.com slash 8sheep. That's the number 8 and sheep like the animal. 8sheep. This week's question comes from Hannah. Her email reads, Hi, Vanessa. I wanted to thank you for everything you do with the Pregnancy Podcast. I listened to your episodes throughout my entire pregnancy, and they were such a huge help. I felt so much more informed and confident going into birth because of the information you shared. My doctor was even impressed by how much I knew. My son was born a few weeks ago, and we're both doing great. He has a few small birthmarks, and it got me curious about what causes these. I've read a little bit online, but the explanations seem all over the place. I'd love to understand more about why birthmarks happen and if they will go away with time. If this is something you might cover in a future episode, I think a lot of parents would appreciate it. Thank you again for all the information you share and for helping me feel so supported during my pregnancy. Hannah, thank you for your kind words about the podcast. I'm so glad that it was helpful for you during your pregnancy. And hopefully with today's episode, we'll continue to help you even though you already had your baby. Congrats on your baby boy. It's great to hear that you are both doing well. And I hope you are enjoying the transition to motherhood. First, what is a birthmark? A birthmark is an area of skin that looks different from the surrounding skin. It appears at birth. Sometimes it can appear shortly afterward. These marks are very common. And although they can be a little concerning for new parents, they are almost always harmless. Birthmarks form because of slight differences in how skin cells develop or function. Some are visible at birth, others appear in the first few weeks or months of life. This happens because as a baby's skin matures and produces more pigment, it can reveal variations in color or texture. 
Melanocytes play a key role in this process. These are cells that produce melanin, which is the pigment responsible for the color of things like your skin, hair, and eyes. As pigment production increases, the differences between normal and abnormal skin pigmentation become more noticeable, and that makes some birthmarks easier to see over time. During development, some cells can grow or behave differently. These differences can involve melanocytes, those pigment producing cells that create melanin, which can lead to areas of darker or uneven color. Birthmarks can also involve blood vessels that grow more densely in one spot, which can form vascular birthmarks. In some cases, birthmarks can affect other parts of the skin's structure, like connective tissue or lymphatic vessels, and that can cause slight changes in texture or small fluid-filled areas under the skin. It's important for you to know as a parent that birthmarks are not caused by anything you did or did not do during pregnancy. These differences are natural occurrences as a baby's skin and blood vessels develop and they're completely beyond your control. While it's normal to worry about how a birthmark looks or whether it will change, let's examine the different types of birthmarks so that you have a much better understanding. There are two main categories of birthmarks. There are pigmented and vascular. First, let's talk about pigmented. So these are from pigment producing cells, melanocytes, when they grow or cluster together in one area. They can range in color from tan to brown, gray, black, or even blue. The three main types of pigmented birthmarks are cafe au lait spots, moles, and Mongolian spots. Cafe au lait spots, cafe au lait means coffee with milk in French, and that describes their light brown color. These are flat patches, so they're not raised on the skin's surface, and they occur when there is an increased amount of melanin in the skin. These are harmless and are very common in children of all skin tones. Next, you have moles. Moles form from clusters of melanocytes that develop before birth. When they're present at birth, they are called congenital nevi. If your baby does have moles at birth, it's also normal for these to darken or to grow over time. The last type of pigmented birthmarks are Mongolian spots. The term Mongolian spot was coined in the late 1800s by a physician that observed them in babies of Mongolian descent. These types of birthmarks are found in babies of many ethnic backgrounds, And today, many doctors will refer to these as dermal melanocytosis. While the term Mongolian spots may be outdated, this is still frequently used in a lot of literature. These are caused by melanocytes that get trapped or that remain deeper in the skin rather than moving to the surface during development. Because the pigment is deeper, the spots can appear blue, gray, or even greenish, rather than a shade of brown. So those are the pigmented types of birthmarks. Let's talk about vascular birthmarks. These occur when blood vessels form differently or cluster together in one area. These are very common. One study estimated they affect about one in 10 babies. Another found the prevalence to be closer to 20 to 30%. There are three main types of vascular birthmarks. There are salmon patches, hemangiomas, and port wine stains. Salmon patches are also called nevus simplex. These are flat, they're pink or red, and they're caused by dilated capillaries near the skin's surface. If they appear on the forehead, eyelids, nose, or upper lip, they are often called angel kisses, When they appear on the back of the neck, they are known as stork bites. These marks are the result of small clusters of blood vessels that developed differently during early growth in the womb. The process is random. There's no predictable pattern or no particular reason why one area would be affected over another. 
The next type of vascular birthmarks are hemangiomas. These are benign overgrowths of blood vessels that form in one area. They are sometimes called strawberry marks because they tend to have a bright red color and they can have a raised bumpy appearance, kind of like a strawberry. These can be superficial, so they appear just on the surface of the skin and tend to be bright red. They can also be deeper and develop below the surface, in which case they can appear more bluish or purple. It's also possible for a hemangioma to be a combination of both surface and deeper level. Hemangiomas typically go through three phases. So in the growth phase, they grow quickly. And this happens usually in the first six to nine months of life. Then it enters the rest phase where growth stops and the mark kind of stabilizes in its appearance. Then it goes to the involution phase. And this is where the mark will gradually shrink and fade. Research shows that about 50% of hemangiomas disappear by age five, 70% disappear by age seven, and by age 10 to 12, about 95% will disappear. So if this happens to your baby, you can be assured that this will disappear over time. Lastly, there are port wine stains. These are caused by dilated capillaries that don't constrict properly. Unlike the other types of vascular birthmarks, these do not fade and they actually may darken or thicken over time. Port wine stains are named after port wine, which is a dark red wine. They can appear anywhere on the body, but are most commonly found around the face and the neck. These are less common than other types of vascular birthmarks and affect somewhere around 0.3% to 0.5% of newborns. Most birthmarks are completely harmless, and they're simply part of what makes your baby unique. Still, it's always a good idea to mention any birthmarks to your pediatrician. They can help you identify what type of birthmark it is and help you understand what to expect over time. They will also let you know if it needs any monitoring. In rare cases, certain types of birthmarks can be linked to underlying conditions that affect things like blood vessels, nerves, or other tissues. As an example, a large port wine stain near the eye can warrant an eye exam to check for related changes. If a baby has multiple cafe au lait spots, that could prompt a closer look for certain genetic conditions. That being said, I do not want you to worry. Most of the time, these evaluations are precautionary and they'll help ensure that nothing important is missed. Your pediatrician may take a photo so that they can track any changes in the size, shape, or color at your pediatrician visits. And if needed, they can always refer you to a pediatric dermatologist or another specialist for a closer look. In the vast majority of cases, your pediatrician will reassure you that the mark is benign and it may fade or stay the same without causing any problems. If a birthmark is especially large or prominent, you can discuss treatment options with your pediatrician. Some marks could be lightened with laser therapy and certain hemangiomas can respond to medication that actually helps shrink the blood vessels. And many parents embrace their baby's birthmarks without any treatment at all. Hannah, while I don't know exactly what kind of birthmark your baby has, hopefully this gives you a much better understanding of why they happen. Both of my children have birthmarks and I just love them. It's just part of who they are. To recap today's episode, we talked about what a birthmark is, what causes them, I described the different types of birthmarks. The two main categories are pigmented and vascular. Pigmented birthmarks include cafe au lait spots. These are light brown in color. They can include moles that develop from clusters of melanocytes that develop before birth. These do tend to darken and grow as your child grows. And dermal melanocytosis 
also sometimes known as Mongolian spots. These can appear blue, gray, or even greenish rather than brown because they happen when melanocytes get trapped or remain deeper in the skin rather than moving to the surface during development. I also covered vascular birthmarks. These are a result of blood vessels forming differently or clustering together in one area. This includes salmon patches. These are flat and pink or red. When they appear on the face, they are affectionately known as angel kisses. And if your baby gets one on the back of their neck, it is referred to as a stork bite. I also covered hemangiomas. These are also called strawberry marks because of their color and texture. And these go through three phases. They grow for the first about six to nine months. Then they will stop growing and stabilize. And then they enter a phase where they will gradually shrink and fade. By age five, about 50% disappear, 70% are gone by age seven, and 95% of hemangiomas disappear by ages 10 to 12. And I covered port wine stains. Unlike other vascular birthmarks, these don't fade, they tend to darken or thicken over time, and they are most commonly found on the face and neck. Then we wrapped up the episode with talking to your pediatrician and what you can expect to discuss with them. I'd like to thank you for listening to the Pregnancy Podcast today. I hope that you find this episode helpful. If you would like to submit a question for a future Q&A episode, or you just have a suggestion of a topic you would like me to cover, please email Vanessa at PregnancyPodcast.com. You can read the full article and see all of the resources that accompany this episode at PregnancyPodcast.com slash birthmark. Centella asiatica is an incredible herb that has been shown in clinical studies to effectively prevent stretch marks in up to 89% of pregnant women. The best product that I found with this ingredient is the True Belly Serum by 8 Sheep Organics. It contains 85% pure Centella Asiatica extract and is specially formulated to effectively prevent and fade pregnancy-related stretch marks. Like all 8 Sheep products, the True Belly Serum comes with a 100-day happiness guarantee. You can try it completely risk-free, and if you feel like it has not worked for you, or you're not 100% happy with your purchase, simply send them an email and they'll get you a refund, no questions asked. You can check out the True Belly Serum and get 10% off when you go to PregnancyPodcast.com slash 8sheep. That's the number 8 and sheep like the animal. 8sheep. If you're looking for more evidence-based information, become a Pregnancy Podcast Premium member. You will have an ad-free experience on every episode, plus access to hundreds of episodes that cover every topic you could want more information on for pregnancy, planning for your birth, or postpartum. Check out Pregnancy Podcast Premium at PregnancyPodcast.com slash premium.